Welcome back to the OHSU Effect. I'm Lacey Evans. Good morning. With us now is Dr. Christopher Omling of the OHSU Night Cancer Institute. He's also the chief of the Division of Urology and is very experienced in robotic surgery. Good morning. Thanks. Uh, good morning to you, and thanks for having me. So what is robotic surgery? So robotic surgery is where we use an instrument. Uh, it's a, it's a, a technology that uh, allows us to do minimally invasive surgery, meaning that we don't make a big incision. We operate through little holes in the abdomen. It's a laparoscopic type surgery, but we take laparoscopic surgery to another level by using the robotic technology to facilitate the visibility, so improve the uh, how we see uh, during the operation and also allows us to use instruments that have much more flexibility and dexterity than standard surgical instruments. Can you tell us kind of the history of robotic surgery and the procedures and and why were they developed? Well, I think, you know, there's been a big big push over the last 20 years, really, in surgery to become more and more minimally invasive. That's why laparoscopic surgery came around. You know, instead of making a big incision, we can operate through, through little holes. And as laparoscopic surgery developed, we wanted instruments that uh, allowed us to do things more more uh, flexibly and, and be able to have uh, access to different a- parts of the abdomen or other parts of the body that we couldn't with standard laparoscopic surgery. So the so the robotic technology was to develop to facilitate that, and it was originally developed, uh, interestingly enough, for uh, to facilitate cardiac surgery. But cardiac surgeons didn't really take it on initially, and so other subspecialties like like ours, urology, were some of the first to sort of take this technology to the next level in terms of using it in the clinical operating room setting. What are some benefits compared with traditional surgery? Well, the biggest benefit to, to robotic surgery is the uh, has to do with its minimally invasive approach. So in, you know, years ago when we used uh, large incisions in the abdomen or flank, uh, it took uh, patients a long time to recover from their operation. Uh, with the robot, we can operate through tiny one centimeter uh, incisions and and we put uh, the instruments through those incisions, and, and, and by doing that, we allow quicker recovery time. So patients are out of the hospital sooner, they have less pain, they have less blood loss with the procedure, and it allows them to get back to full activity and full uh, work at a much earlier point in time. Are there certain procedures where this is really commonplace, where it's used more? Well, we use it very commonly in urology. We do prostatectomy, radical prostatectomy for prostate cancer. We also use it for bladder cancer to remove bladders and reconstruct the urinary tract. We use it for kidney cancer, and we use it for reconstructive procedures. That's just within my own uh, specialty. But robotic surgery has actually expanded beyond urology, and it's been in use, used in cardiac surgery now, used in general or bowel surgery, used in gynecologic surgery to perform, for example, hysterectomies. It's also, interestingly enough, uh, used for ear, nose, and throat surgery to do tonsillar or throat surgery through the, through the mouth. So uh, it's really expanded to multi-specialties now. And it, it sounds like there might be some new procedures here that are kind of giving patients some options that they didn't have before. Yeah. Well, there's new procedures being, being developed all the time, and one of them is that, is the ENT application where instead of uh, having to crack and separate the jaw to have access to the throat to do surgery in the past, we can actually do it through using these very tiny instruments with a, with a lot of dexterity. So that's some of them. And then, you know, some of the applications within our own specialty urology allow us just to do, you know, reconstructive procedures in a laparoscopic way, meaning a, a non-invasive or minimally invasive way, which we weren't able to do before. Are there any procedures that you think aren't proven yet or that maybe patients should be cautious about? <laughs> Well, whenever there's new technology and it comes to, to the clinical setting, uh, we, we worry a little bit about, you know, is it just the hype and the, the marketing of the new device? So we have to be careful and sort of jumping on the bandwagon too early. And uh, we need to sort of take time and test some of these things and see if they truly do benefit the patient in terms of earlier recovery and, uh, and some of the, the, the benefits of that kind of surgical approach. So um, there, there are some surgeries that, you know, have been done and haven't been, you know, completely studied yet, but uh, it's sort of difficult to study these prospectively in advance of the application of the technology. And so we're, we're sort of trying to bring it into these new subspecialties slowly so that we can actually learn about how effective it is before we sort of take it on wholeheartedly. What kind of questions should patients ask if they're considering robotic surgery? Well, probably the most important question is to to ask would be the experience of your surgeon. I mean, I I tell patients that all the time. It's very important. We know in most surgical procedures, but in in our area of uh, specialty, for example, for prostatectomy, the 
the experience of the surgeon and how frequently that procedure is performed. Some patients think that just because this uh, procedure is done with robotic technology that it all of a sudden just becomes easy, like it's pushing the button, you know, like it's uh, autopilot. And there is still somebody performing the surgery, so that surgeon has to be experienced. And so probably the most important thing that you can ask as a patient is, you know, how many have you done and, and what's, uh, you know, your, your hospital, how, how frequently do they do this procedure, what is your team like? And it's all, about, it's all a team effort, too, when we're doing this kind of surgery. There's a lot that goes into it. There's nursing staff and support staff and anesthesia. So, so it's uh, this, this, the experience of the surgeon, the experience of the institution, and uh, you know, the experience of the team that actually performs a procedure. Because you need a lot of training to operate these yeah. robots. Yes. And it's a, you know, we call that a learning curve. You know, the, your, most surgeons who have adopted robotic surgery have uh, prior to that done the standard sort of open surgical approaches and to transition from being an open surgeon to a robotic surgeon takes a period of learning and uh, we we go through a period where we learn how to do this uh, procedure and again the more you the more you do it the the better you are at it and the better the outcomes you know in terms of things like uh, cancer control or other things that whatever the end point of that operation might be, the better the outcomes, the more, uh, the, or the more experienced the surgeon, the better the outcomes. Well, what was that training experience like for you going from open surgery to the robotic surgery? It was a, it was a little trying because, uh, you know, you're very uh, familiar with a way in which you're doing a procedure, but you realize that you sort of realize and uh, I guess buy into the fact that it could be done in a less invasive way. Uh, but it's, uh, I think surgeons in general are a little bit stubborn, and when you do things a certain way and you do them, uh, do it well that way, it's hard to sort of try to do, learn a different sort of approach. And, but, but I think when you see the advantages and you see how, uh, how uh, incredibly you know, developed the technology is and how much it facilitates the operation, it's hard not to be interested in it. And so uh, many of us open surgeons have transitioned to, to become robotic surgeons because of all the advantages that it offers. Now, you mentioned that patients should ask questions of their surgeon and of mm -hmm. the institution, but what about the patient themselves? Is, is everyone eligible for this type of surgery, or does it depend on their condition and their health? It really, it really depends on the condition. There are certain situations where, where robotic surgery or any kind of laparoscopic type surgical approach are, is not possible. Uh, so there is still a role for the you know, old-fashioned you know, incision and, and uh, uh, so there are situations where previous surgery have been done or, or complicated uh, medical conditions that preclude the use of the, of the robot. So it's not, it's not for everybody. We've extended it pretty broadly to even complex patients at OHSU. Uh, but again, that's based on the experience level, and there are some patients that just don't qualify for it. You are giving a demonstration of how robotic surgery works at OMSI as part of the Body Worlds and the Brain exhibit. So what will we be able to see during that? Well, we're excited about that. We're going to have a couple of uh, what we call the robotic consoles. And the console is where the surgeon sits uh, to do to move the instruments that are controlled at the patient who's asleep, uh, anesthetized across the room. And so when you do this procedure, you're sitting at a console where you look uh, into a, into a uh, setting where you have magnified three-dimensional view. And the, the uh, people who come and, and uh, come to OMSI will be able to actually sit in the con and look in the console and see what kind of visibility uh, you can get with this kind of technology and actually be able to lay their hands on the, the devices that control the instruments and so see how precisely the instruments uh, are able to be moved. So, and then we're probably going to have some video, video there's videos there as well uh, that uh, people can look and kind of see some of the things that uh, robotic surgery is used for. So we're excited, but you'll actually be get a sort of a hands-on experience where you actually be able to sit at the surgeon's console, what the, what the, sur what the surgeon sees. And it won't be a live operation, obviously, <laughs> but it'll be an opportunity to get your hands on the controls. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. And you will be there tomorrow from 11 to 1, but there are OHSU demonstrations going on both days, today and tomorrow, uh, between 11 and 5. And of course, that's at OMSI. So mm -hmm. my final question, what do you see as the future of robotics in surgery? Well, we, we see that it will continue to develop. You know, if you look at how surgery will be performed five and ten years uh, from now, we won't be, we'll be less and less often making big incisions and more and more often uh, ha using smaller instrumentation to perform the same operation. So as technology evolves, we can operate through even, even smaller holes uh, or even a single hole. And there's, uh, there's procedures now that we do through a single incision 
a very small incision using the robotic or almost like a miniaturized technology. And I see that those things will develop to a, to a great extent over the next five or 10 years. Christopher Omling of the OHSU Knight Cancer Institute, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it.